एक मिनट सर यस कबिन गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग सर प्लीज बी सीटेड थैंक यू सर आर यू वैक्सीनेटेड यस सर नो सिम्टम्स ऑफ कोविड नो सर यू मे रिमूव योर मास्क थैंक यू सर प्रीतम कुमार यस सर प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ टू द बोर्ड हाईलाइटिंग योर एजुकेशन जॉब एक्सपीरियंस इफ एनी एंड हॉबीज माई नेम इज प्रीतम आई वॉज बॉर्न एंड ब्रॉट अप इन सिक्का राजस्थान आई डिड माई स्कूलिंग फ्राम राजस्थान देन आई डिड माई ग्रेजुएशन इन इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग फ्राम आई आई टी रोपर आई पास आउट इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन एंड आई एम करंटली नॉट इन एनी जॉब एंड माई हॉबीज इंक्लूड्स वॉचिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज ऑन बिग कैट्स प्लेइंग वॉलीबॉल एंड जनरल इंटरेस्ट इन अफेयर्स ऑफ नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इम्पोर्टेंस प्रथम यू आर एन इंजीनियर यस इंजीनियर trying to make his career in civil services yes sir and not his own core area of uh, education how do you explain this sir i find the civil services career as more suitable for me uh, because of the diversity and challenges and the learning opportunity that the service will provide and that to starting at such a young age uh, secondly sir the and service services has a job security as well as a short career progression and thirdly sir it is a public facing job so uh, that is something i am interested in okay sir. okay we respect that but you tell me pritham why most of the engineers in our country are not employable so many surveys have indicated that and this can be attributed to many reasons uh, like uh, the curriculum Uh, which is not uh, industry relevant or is obsolete on many aspects uh, secondly sir the internship or the training opportunities that the engineer should get before passing out are lacking in many institutes uh, so these are few of the reasons so what uh, the government of the day has been doing to ensure that there is a, all the gaps are bridged so that engineers find job after passing out from the colleges so the we currently have got the new education policy and that is aiming to bring some fundamental changes other than that sir government is running many schemes uh, like improving the infrastructure and giving autonomy to institutes to collaborate with other good performing institutes so that there can be better uh, improvement in skills of children sir so there is a dichotomy i see in the society on the one hand there is a problem of uh, finding good engineers in the country on the other hand you have so many unicorn companies startup companies coming in the india so much so that we are ranking third in the world as far as uh, unicorn companies are concerned how do you explain this phenomena so we are surely doing good on the startup front Uh, but i would say that still we are below our potential uh, that what we can achieve so um, the government has facilitated startups by uh, startup india policy this uh, nt um, so atal innovation lab that um, leads to incubation of startups hand holding etc that has been done by the government and we have been improving on the ease of doing business parameters also so that has pushed uh, the startup culture in india forward Uh, but sir still i think we can improve uh, much more on that sir let's talk of digital india mission what is the motto of digital india so Any we are idea? focusing on three things here what is the motto of uh, there is a motto also there is a power to empower this power to empower thank you sir how do you get power to empower under this uh, digital india mission so we are aiming to build uh, Uh, core digital infrastructure uh, secondly we are also aiming for uh, digital literacy and for um, thirdly we are going for e governance uh, on through digital means only so these together can empower uh, good governance in the country um, providing the services to the more marginalized and isolated area and uh, by digital means there comes a lot of opportunities and information asymmetry is uh, breached due to these so these also provide a huge opportunities going forward sir a number of initiatives uh, have been taken by the government of india in the field of uh, e learning 
on the field of education, broadly speaking. Could you share one, uh, some of the schemes launched by the government with us? So we have the SWAM portal, uh, SWAM portal which is used, which was intensively used during Corona. Mm -hmm. And so other than that, the massive open online courses uh, run by Higher Education Institute has been going on for a long time. Have you heard of Diksha? Mm -hmm. You haven't heard? Sorry, okay. sir, I haven't heard. Okay, okay. And uh, then we are uh, under the scheme, Digital India scheme, we are trying to create a digital highway also, so as to connect uh, villages also, isn't it? So in this connection, what is the role of uh, Bharat Net? How much it has achieved so far? So Bharat Net aims to connect all the gram, gram panchayats to fast optical fiber cable. Uh, so, and uh, it has... Uh, connected nearly 1.7 uh, lakh uh, gram panchayats as of now the government data so there are still more to go and other than that sir this connection is only to the main centers in the gram panchayat like panchayat buildings etc so we need to uh, provide this to the households also so we have to work on that also how do you think that this connectivity broadband connectivity to villages will help improve uh, the rural India? So first is that e-governance, uh, the governance or the services by the government can be easily accessed by the farmers and they do not have to go to the city centers, etc. Uh, secondly, sir, the, uh, for farmers, uh, they can access uh, the in weather information. the farmers. Uh, any, any other sections of the society which uh, get help from this scheme? So we can also have uh, digital education, uh, like uh, we can connect the uh, schools and have the lectures by okay. good. So here, uh, digital education, another area, farmers too, any other you can think of? So telemedicine is telemedicine. one prospect. Any other? I can think of okay. only these. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Pritam. Yes, sir. Who inspire you to take uh, mathematics as an optional? any civil servant or teacher? It was uh, not a person as per se. Uh, it was a group of, it, it was many things that led me to take this. Firstly, I have interest in, general interest in mathematics. Hmm. And secondly, it is a good scoring subject in the UPSC. So, and thirdly, sir, the um, material availability was also good in this. So, these inspired me to go for this. Sir. Okay. What could be the possible use of uh, calculus uh, for uh, policy analysis? Sorry, sir, I can't think of any. Uh, after becoming a foreign secretary to the government of India, uh, what you would like to speak uh, in your first press conference regarding the international world order nowadays? So, the world order currently is uncertain. Hmm. Uh, we are shifting from a unipolar world to a multipolar world. So, we are somewhere in the transit. So, that I would say about the, multi, the current world status. Okay. So, do you believe that the era of uh, a new Cold War or neo-Cold War uh, is emerging day by day? So, it can be said that the, between China and USA, uh, there is some semblance to the Cold War that was earlier between the USSR, USSR and USSR. So, do you believe that for national security, India should look forward uh, for the establishment of another mil military alliance like Quad? Sir, so Quad is not a military alliance. Are you sure? Sir, our government's official stand has been that. Okay. So, do you believe that military alliance could be there? Sir, government of India or India in general has been uh, avoiding military alliances. We believe in multi-alignment and forming partnerships. Okay. Why it is so? Sir, alliances bring rigidity and uh, being a country with multiple interests and needs from many players. So, we need to keep our op options open, sir. Okay. Uh, what could be the possible threat of NATO? To India, sir? No, to the world, across the world. Sir, NATO is a military alliance and 
uh, that and its expansion sometime can threaten the security of other nations. So that can sometime lead to confrontation like the recent Ukraine crisis can be attributed in some measure to the NATO expansion. Sir. Okay. Pritam, it is said that uh, network-led development is better than uh, the bureaucratic-led development. That's why we are making a network of state, civil society and market. Do you believe it is uh, good for India? I sir, believe that it will be good for India. We have a huge population, uh, different, uh, a vast aspirational diversity. Mm -hmm. So taking that into consideration, consultations and participation is must going forward in any policy. So what's the benefit uh, of the um, role of market in public sector? Public sector? Yeah. Yes, used. Yeah. In, in public sector. What's, what could be the possible uh, positive impact of the participation of market into the public sector? So market is must to, to grow our economy. Hmm. Uh, we need to uh, invest and we need to produce capital for addressing our unemployment issues. So for that, we need to make market friendly policies and that cannot be made without the participation of market. So while formulating policies, we need to take their view into consideration. Do you believe that consistently uh, uh, downsizing of the government or you can say that the right sizing of the government, we are consistently undermining the conception of sovereignty? Sir, I do not believe we are undermining sovereignty in any way by, um, way by disinvestment or other measures that the government has the motto of minimum government, maximum governance. Hmm. So we are exiting the sectors which are not core and getting the government to focus on the sectors which are more core. Can you explain in details maximum governance and minimum government? What it says? Sir, it implies that with minimum bureaucratic intervention, uh, we should be able to provide the delivery, you know, service delivery hmm. and to our people in most efficient ways. Sir. So, do you believe that uh, a state become fiasco nowadays? Everything has to be decided by the market. Is it, it is good? Sir, everything cannot be decided by market. That would be a, a free capital, free capitalism, or the extreme of that. And no government in the world is following that. We have Competition Commission of India to regulate the market. Other than that, timely we have the government interventions. And for public, the government is taking socialist steps like providing education, healthcare, etc. So we need a mix of both, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pritam. Yes, ma'am. So coming from Rajasthan, can you analyze status of women in your state? Ma'am, on the uh, evil on the negatives, we have uh, some social evils like parda system, uh, dowry, and child marriages, uh, low female literacy. But on positive, ma'am, there have been improvement on, on all of these fronts. And we have few women leaders also like Vasudhra Rajiv who, who has done good, sir, ma'am. Can you name another five women leaders from your state in any field? Uh, ma'am, we have Mithali Ras, he is Indian cricket team captain for women. I cannot think of him. So, uh, what is localization of data? Uh, ma'am, in the digital economy, we are generating a lot of data. And that data is uh, sometimes uh, uh, used by the MNCs, which have their centers outside India also. So we are going for for those MNC to store that data in India itself. So that is data localization. And where is this data stored? I'm in huge data centers. Okay, very right. So uh, uh, do you support freebies given by states? I mean, not, not in totality. Uh, if free, freebies are given by state, uh, they should be targeted and dictated by you know, fiscal prudence. Okay. And what can centre do to actually control, regulate or uh, you know, stop these freebies given by states? I mean, we have the FRBM law which uh, mandates the state for fiscal consolidation. So, we should stick to... Strict adherence of the law is must, I would say. 
any other way center can use uh, its uh, authority ma'am given the budget of the state government state, you know, center has limited options to intervene uh, state can center can only intervene when the state go for extra market borrowings over a certain limit so that's where center can come in but inside the, their territory states can go for free these ma'am okay so sri lanka coming to sri lanka why is it in crisis ma'am it is a bop crisis for sri lanka and there are many reasons attributed to this uh, like the uh, tourism remittances and the export sector which used to provide sri lanka with uh, forex reserves has been hit by the easter attack and the consecutive uh, pandemic that has been there uh, secondly ma'am the un i would say unsustainable debt that the sri lanka has taken from china has added in some measure to that and thirdly ma'am the uh, policy of the governments like uh, uh, reducing the taxes which had led the government uh, which has left the government with little power to intervene and the overnight banning of uh, chemical fertilizers and that has also hit the agricultural production of sri lanka so it is facing uh, food scarcity also very right so uh, give me only one solution which sri lanka can adopt to solve all its crises ma'am there cannot be one solution they would need many structural and fundamental changes in their economy okay give me three well. three three solutions uh, firstly ma'am uh, government which is not not based on majoritarian uh, promotion so that should be one there should be inclusivity uh, secondly ma'am they should adhere to the non populist policy Uh, in economic terms and third ma'am the uh, loan that they are or the package they are going with the imf should be uh, used wisely going forward thank you thank you pritam thank you ma'am pritam party gate have you heard this word it has been in news yes ma'am what do you understand by it ma'am it uh, uh, in uk uh, the prime minister and the many of his party members were found violating the covid norms rules uh, by engaging in pub, engaging in gatherings and other parties so it refers to that so what do you uh, feel is the solution is it right to uh, you know uh, put your country's leader uh, on a in a spotlight for such a small incident ma'am accountability should be there for uh, whoever it is Uh, but the prime minister has gone for an unconditional apology so i think that should be um, that should suffice this man pritam you told the board that if you play volleyball yes ma'am can you explain volleyball to me in layman terms and tell me three most important rules of volleyball uh, volleyball is ma'am a uh, rally of uh, crossing the ball over a uh, heightened net between two teams and rules important rules being each team get three touches at a time if the ball drops the point goes to other team so the ball should ball should not touch the ground and ma'am third rule is that there are six players in each team all right pritam you are an engineer what have you specialized in electrical engineering what is difference between electrical electronics ec can you tell me in layman terms again Ma'am, EC is uh, stand for electric, uh, electronics and communication engineering. How is it different from electrical or electronics? Uh, that adds a uh, additional parameter of communication into the into this. So that is just a step ahead or an extra course in electric. Okay, and electricals and electronics. What is difference between these two terms? Uh, Ma'am, it relates to the flow of current. Basically, in both we study the flow of electron. but in one uh, in electronics we have high in current and low voltage and in electrical we have high voltages and low current all right pritam i often feel curious that why can't we switch on our fans with remote just as we can switch on our acs or tvs can you explain the reason to me uh, ma'am the traditional fan that we have currently can't be switched on but we are getting new fans in the market that can be operated by Uh, remote controls so what so is we, the technology of traditional fan that makes it incapable to be switched on with the remote we do not have any connecting device between the remote and the fan so in the new 
fans we have optocouplers which using infrared can be connected with our remote controls all right when you were uh, discussing with my fellow colleague you were talking about data right yes. data localization uh let's imagine that you have to make a mathematical model for migration uh, of workers that just recently happened during covid using different mathematical models how will you do it how will you manage that data sorry ma'am i am not aware of many mathematical models or for say any it's okay do you know what is labor force participation rate yes ma'am please tell me what is it ma'am it is the percentage of our workforce that is willing to work what is the labor force participation rate for women in india uh, ma'am the nsso survey pegs it around 22% Why is it decreasing day by day? Can you give me three reasons for it? Ma'am, one is the patriarchal nature of the our society that is a hindrance. Secondly, ma'am, uh, some economist economist attribute it to the automation also. Like most of the, our uh, women labor force participation is in uh, tasks which are routine and mundane, so they can be easily replaced by machines. But if I tell you it is decreasing more in urban areas and in upper class women, can you think of any reason? Yeah, one reason is uh, after a uh, family achieves a certain level of uh, uh, financial stability, uh, they take pride in uh, keeping their women at home. That is a social aspect attributed to this at times. Okay, Pritam, my last question to you would be: Let's say a country is growing at five percent per year. By when will it be able to double its income or growth and that would be calculated by compound interest formula and i will okay. take i will need time for that and pen paper okay thank you pritam thank you ma'am pritam what is your permanent postal address so it is my village bp village post kotra uh, tehsil neem ka thana district sikkar in rajasthan okay neem ka thana yes what is neem a potent mosquito repellent Yes, it has been used in mosquito mosquito repellent creams. Mm, why is that? Sir? Is there any special or specific chemical property? I do not know of uh, the exact chemical properties. Sir. But you are aware that it's mosquito repellent. It is used as, or it can be used as a mosquito repellent. I have read in the ingredients of many mosquito repellent. Is it creams. also anti-carcinogen? Sorry, sir, I am not aware of that. That's okay. Pritam, when you talk of um, criminalization of politics, of late, Section Eight of Representation of People's Act, nineteen fifty-one, lot has been written about it. Why is it so? So the criminalization in politics has been increasing uh, in our consecutive Lok Sabha. So and the Section Eight, which is you, which should be uh, a hindrance to this is not working as per it should so these uh, articles have been written about reforms in this okay but do you have any clue about section 8 of representation of people's act so i vaguely recall it, um, it has many measures like uh, let's say a person is charged cheated for murder the trial is not commenced will section 8 of representation of people's act be attracted or should you be convicted one should be convicted for this sir. okay So, are there any Supreme Court guidelines on this, sir? Regarding, regarding the one which I asked you right now, sir, Supreme Court has given a judgment in Lily Thomas case that if a person is committed, uh, if a sitting member is convicted of a offence, then his seat will be vacated, vacated immediately, and it will not be stayed till the till the time he appeals. Okay, all right, so. in other words there is no law which states that once when the charge sheet is filed you are disqualified from contesting elections am i right in saying this yes sir charge sheet alone cannot be basis for disqualification charge sheet alone okay very good now can you name few directive principles which are enforceable and by that virtue justiciable as well so which are in force at the moment or which can be enforced in future enforced at the moment so i can't think of any sir okay let me just uh, hand hold you for a while is it correct to say that one of the dpsp stipulates 
restriction on consumption of alcohol yes sir article 48 fantastic you remember the number as well uh, is it not enforceable in state of bihar yes sir bihar and gujarat both have banned alcohol consumption sir. absolutely so by that virtue the directive principles which is there in the bear act is it then not enforceable in those two states it is enforceable it is enforceable in those two yes. okay now that i have handled you for about few seconds can you just think of any other directive principles which are legally enforceable sir we have uniform civil code that is in practice in Go state of goa very good and do you think it's a good idea to implement it throughout the country are you in support of ucc sir i am in support of ucc but the modalities have to be worked out before implementation okay and why are you in support of ucc don't you think it is abrogation of article 25 sir article 25 is not uh, absolute uh, per se and so what are the grounds under which the article 25 can be restricted only three grounds which are they as uh, a public health morality others other fundamental rights okay public health morality is fine but which is the third one a public order is also there sir okay so ucc how can ucc be used to restrict article 25 then sir uh, the supreme court in minerva minerva mills case has held that the constitution is found on the bedrock of uh, a balance between dpsp and fundamental rights so while uh, while implementing any funda any dpsp now uh, there can be reasonable reasonable restriction on fundamental rights as well sir okay all right uh, my last question to you is india free of uh, chemical weapons so we have signed the convention which prohibit prohibit this so i would say sir we are free of chemical weapons okay right. thank you thank you sir pritam yes sir recently we have seen a very popular uh, TV show Shark Tank India, so which shows uh, entrepreneurs making presentations to a panel of uh, investors and investors deciding whether to invest or not. Have you seen that? No, sir. Yeah, you have seen that. Sir. How do you define uh, success and failure? The success uh, when one sets a goal for himself and he is content that he has achieved. then it is a uh, success for him it is subjective for person to person so i would say to you to you how do you define a success i don't want a definition of success according to you what is success what makes you to think this is success and this is failure so if i am content with the outcome of a uh, event or activity so i would say that is success for me and failure so if i am not content with the outcome then i'd say uh, it was a learning step for me and okay. what has been the biggest failure in your life so far sir i started uh, focusing on general awareness after a long time earlier i was not much aware of that uh, so i'd say that has been fa fa uh, failure on my part sir okay thank you very much pritam your interview is over you may go now thank you sir Thank you, sir. Come, come. Sit, sit. Thank you. So, how was your experience? Ah, uh, it was fine. Many of technical questions I could not answer. When is your interview? Eleventh May. Eleventh May. Lot of time is there. Please, we are a wonderful candidate for the civil services. Thank you, sir. Let, let me say that. So, unless unless you do something fundamentally wrong at in the interview. are going to get very good marks in the interview also thank you sir so all all the traits all the qualities of a civil servant are there in you so i am not going to delve on that issue mm -hmm. these are all your positives coming to basics where you need some improvement is you are a student of maths so you anticipate or expect some questions pertaining to your field of knowledge and one such question could be various methods of modeling a uh, modeling i have written but uh -huh. i have not gone uh -huh. through i will be I think reading you, uh -huh. whatever time is there at your disposal 
go through different modelings because a student of math cannot is not supposed to be saying sorry sir i don't know and i can't think of even one modeling so that is one area where you needs to study or read more and then application of those models in various fields this uh, this is one area one uh, particularly in the field of public policy and all that that is very important so questions were asked uh, uh, related to all that yes so we, you could not answer that part very satisfactorily yeah, i felt that uh -huh. so that that is uh, that, that is that Thank you. then a very opinion based question was uh, thrown at you if you are the foreign secretary how will you explain there also you just think for a while collect your ideas and give two three points very in a very concise manner that will help you in that will help you in speaking properly cogently and that will help the board in understanding your personality that he can think properly he can collect his thoughts he can conjure up his ideas and he can give a consistent and cogent argument for that isn't it so that is that is one area like uh, question on quart whether it is a military alliance or an economic alliance so if you are very sure of it no it is not a military alliance then you can say no no sir it is an economy go back and again work, uh, read this it started uh, as to the best of our knowledge started as a military alliance then it was converted into a con economic alliance if that be so if what we are telling you is correct then your answer becomes suspicious isn't it i was not aware that is uh, so so the bottom line is uh, this is just an illustration bottom line is when you don't know anything with clarity with 100% confidence don't say yes or no clearly don't take a stand so just think for a while whether you know the answer or not in your haste in your exuberance to answer you should not be giving a wrong answer isn't it in some question sir if i feel that i was right in that in that i feel that i was right because our prime minister has highlighted at the sangri la dialogue itself that it is not against any country or a military alliance all right but god is not only the prime minister of our country isn't it so 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 you have to take i can a, elaborate more uh, on that from view, uh, uh, perspective view, of uh, us etc then, then, okay. then it becomes uh, better okay thank you then whenever the opportunity is uh, thrown at you for giving any constructive thought any innovative ideas don't shy away from the responsibility catch it by its four locks and try to give your best because you are a wonderful candidate so one such uh, uh, opportunity if you get just catch it with you your both hands so cognitive intelligence is there but just work on that with these uh, i think these are the general observations in your 30 minutes of interview so work on all this lot of time is there and and and, and give a precise specific and concise answers the more you speak the more problem you will be inviting for yourself i don't want you to speak less but enough you have to draw a line how far and thus far no, no further that you have to draw a line otherwise you are a wonderful candidate coming to your uh, appearance sense of dressing and all that i'll change that it's uh, not what uh, i will so wear in the interview tie to you must uh, uh, yeah, must yeah. change i think uh, you will be wearing a i have a different suit for okay, the interview okay. date this this uh, shoes also you are wearing this only uh, i was thinking what i can uh, change is a flashy looks uh, some modern modern and flashy shoes I'll change the traditional shoes if you have with a I'll change I'll borrow it yeah, from yeah. a friend if needed Oxford <laughs> no. Oxford cut is more Oxford formal. cut yeah Oxford cut yes I'll otherwise you are a very very good personality and there is a very bright chances of you making it to the civil services wish you all the best thank you sir thank you